All right, I'm gonna try and show you how I make the Freddy glove and what I use to make it with. You have to have a piece of copper for the back plate and on the inside of the glove, which I'll show you when I make it. I use a welding steel 16 gauge. I buy it at Lowe's or the scrap yard. It's thin, the perfect width for knife, the knife blades. You'll need a pair of gloves. I use three quarter inch copper tubing. If you have smaller hands, you can probably get away with a half inch and smaller gloves. You just have to work with what uh, size hands you have. I use steel rivets. They're just a standard eighth inch. And I use Stay Seal 15. It's a silver sorter for a high temp. Uh, use it mostly in HVAC. Um, that's the only thing I've found that'll work on the steel and copper together. And it takes uh, time and patience to get it to go together. And uh, I have a set of stencils that I worked with and made to fit my hand so I can go by. And uh, I use map gas, the yellow and the high temperature torch, the better one, to get more heat because you'll need it. And uh, you'll need uh, a drill, some cutters, sheet metal cutters, um, a grinder, uh, some a hammer and a few other tools. So um, I'll draw some stuff out uh, on the sheet, cut it out, and I'll show you what that looks like when I get that done. Okay, there's a step before you can draw it out on the for the fingers and that's uh, when I take the tubing I cut it you can either cut it with this or you can get a grinder or ever how you want to do it cut it and open it up and keep opening it up until you get it open and hammer it flat you hammer it flat you'll have a flat piece of copper which is a little stronger than what you would buy the sheets with and then you take your stencils and you draw your pattern on them so that when uh, you're ready to cut them out you don't have to fiddle faddle back and forth same with uh, the knives draw them out so that you can just cut them out and the back plate for your glove so I'll do that and I'll be back so I've got the pattern on there we're going to cut one out you don't have to worry about being perfect because once you hammer it into shape of your finger you'll have to grind a little bit anyway but the reason you flatten it out is because it's easier to cut and you don't have to grind as much but you know once you do one or two you can decide which way is easier for you if you make more than one if you're not satisfied with the first one make another one little v-notch right here that's so when you round it over it pulls together and comes in and it don't wrinkle up 
now you know where it's uneven you can take the grinder at this point and smooth it out. Or you can wait until they're all done and do them all at once. Okay, I've got everything cut out. And while you're cutting everything out, you're going to have some scrap left over from the fingertips, a whole bunch of it. And while you've got all that scrap, you need to cut eight little strips to go underneath your fingers to hold the, the gloves on. So I cut them out and I've rounded them to make like a half a ring. So when I get ready to sort them on there, they're already rounded. So there's the blades. Got four of them. And I've got all the templates cut out and sanded, ready to shape. And the back plate and to go underneath, but the one that goes underneath has to be shaped for your hand. So I'm going to go ahead and shape these and I'll be back. Okay, I'm going to shape one to show you how the end goes together. Me, I have an inch bar. I center it, just push it a little bit to get started. I made me a little metal tray to sit on it to where all I have to do is it's pretty much shaped. But you have to, I still have to even it up. And I bring it out on the end. And I just start hammering the ends together. at a time until it comes together and you don't have a big old wrinkle on the side or too much of a gap in the middle. To where eventually you come up with the end of the finger. And that's how you get them started. Okay, I've got them all shaped, and this is what the back of the finger looks like. It goes behind the knuckle, and it hooks to the back of the hand, and the front one goes underneath it. And uh, the part that's beveled on the front. That's to protect the front of your finger. Keep it from sliding out. So it's time to start soldering the blades on the fingers. So that we can get the blade you know, finger knives. So the first thing I do is Clamp it in a vise. And I get my sorter. And this is where you have to get the metal almost hot enough to melt, cherry red so that the silver will stick to it. Once you get some silver solder stuck to the blade, you just have to heat the copper up just a little bit and 
you're done. So let's let's do one and see how it goes. See, it has to get almost melting temperature, the steel, a really yellow color before it sticks. But uh, once it sticks, let's see, can you see on the side? That's the silver solder. And once you stick that to the copper and get the copper hot, it doesn't take much. Okay, I've got it lined up for the first one to be sorted. So let's see what happens. See the color of the solder on the steel as it's heating up. The copper starting to turn colors. How well it's on there. Alright, we'll do the rest of them. Okay, now all four knives are on the tip of the fingers. You want to try and get them as centered as possible. Okay, the little strips that I told uh, you to cut out of the scraps that you have for pieces left over, so you want to cut a piece to where 
when you put your finger and glove in the in the knife blade you sorter the piece right here so that your finger has something to hold on to and it won't just flap off of your finger so best way to do that is to first put a drop of sorter on the one end to the knife okay on this one you know you've got the straight blade it just piece of metal don't look like a knife but you kind of want it to look like a blade a real one but not real enough to cut so what you'll need to do is sharpen it I've got a belt sander but you'll have to sharpen it a little bit to put an edge on it to make it look realistic. You gotta do both sides evenly. both sides evenly. It will get hot, so it'd be best if you wore gloves. But I'm just doing this to show you the difference between standard blade knot or the standard cut out and how it would look eventually once you finish. Just keep going back and forth until you get the look that you want. can make it wider or smaller just ever how you want it to look that's how you do it okay now that we have an edge a look like an edge on all the blades we're going to attach the back part of the finger to the front part we need to line them up where the back one is over top the front one so that it will move and you want when it's shut or extended you want the curvature to barely meet under so that when it bends you know it won't catch so just barely underneath it so you line them up where they meet make sure they're as straight as possible you know knife tip to the center of the back um, once you get them aligned to where it looks like they're right you mark them and drill a hole so I'm 
gonna drill the holes, then I'll be back. Now I have the holes in both ends, and we're gonna put them together. First, we're gonna get a rivet, slide it in, and this is an important part because if you don't use a spacer before you put them together they'll be way too tight and you won't be able to move it so take and insert it and just squeeze it until that breaks off and you pull it out and uh, you get another one do the other side Insert the spacer. And there you have it. Now you're going to have some little pieces sticking out in here. What I like to do is take the end of the rivet, knock that out. comes out. Let's pull this back out. Do the other side. Get that little ball out of it. And I like to hammer them flat. So again, we have to use the spacer. Use my little anvil here. If you can see it good, but let's zoom in here a little bit. All right. See this, how it's a little flatter, it won't rub your finger versus how it sticks out on that side. And you just pull the spacer out and uh, And there's your finger joint. So I'm gonna fix the other side and we'll come back and we'll put the rings on the back of the finger joint and we'll keep on moving. Okay, um, we're gonna put the back ring on on the back part of the finger so that when you put your glove on, your hand in the glove, uh, you'll be able to work the finger a whole lot easier by having the two and uh, what you'll want to do is you'll want to put the, your glove on put your finger in it and when I cut them you know they're way big so I mark them and cut them to where my hand just barely where it just fits in there just right and it's not too loose. The other thing you want to do is see how close it is when you bend it and make sure that uh, where you want them uh, won't interfere with the other ring because if you put it up too high it might not come up all the way and you'll be stuck hitting it and it you know it won't feel right it won't feel the same so make sure that uh, you bring it down just enough to where you can open and close all the way with your finger so when you do that 
you'll be ready to sort her. So that's what we're going to do. And like before, I'm going to put a piece of sorter on the end of them. That way it'll stick easier. You know, because you only have the two hands. And the torch has a switch to stay on, which is good. Sorter on the end of it. We're going to put it on the finger. And what we want to do is get this one hot. Okay, now I'm going to do the back plate and it's time to cut, cut it out of the piece of copper we've got. And I went ahead, I've got one cut out and uh, then I, I've actually got two and I've got the holes drilled for the fingers to attach to and to attach to the glove. And uh, I like to make mine look like it's got knuckles, you know, it's molded to the back of my hand. So I made a jig like the back of your hand, knuckles. And what I do is I lay it down, you know, line it up the way it would look. And then I take a rubber hammer. And I just hammer it a little bit into the grooves and over the edges just a tad to give it that feel like it's formed to the fit of your hand. I just like to look better. You don't have to. The ones on the movies and stuff are pretty much just a straight bend. But uh, this is what I like to do. It kind of looks like it, it's molded to the knuckles and stuff. And it'll look even better when it's on, everything's put together. And on the inside of the glove, uh, when you drill the holes, you can get a small piece of tin and a marker and do a little outline and dot the holes. And then when you do, you can cut it out and you'll have a piece that will line up on the inside of the glove to these three holes and that way it won't pull out through the glove the rivets won't pull out it'll have like a big washer on the back of it so that's what I like to do and it's about time to connect this to the glove and the fingers so that's what we're going to do next Another thing I like to do is I put a bend in the end of the finger to where when you hook it to the back plate 
of your glove. It gives you a little extra maneuverability or to where you can position and adjust. And what I've done is I made me a jig. I cut a hole in it and a piece of metal. I just screwed it down and you go, I will go over about a quarter of an inch past the hole I drilled for the rivets and uh, I'll hold it into place and I'll give it a good lick and then all you have to do is straighten it up a little bit and you've got the bend and that helps you adjust the positions of your fingers a whole lot easier okay um, after I look and see which position my knives fit best on my hands as far as the lengths of my fingers I always have to shorten the pinky finger down a lot because mine's a little short but uh, some people may not have this problem but I have to go through and see which one fits better and you know where you cut these long you can adjust them cut them trim them so they fit just right so I've got them lined out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rivet uh, the fingers to the back plate before I put it on the glove because I've found out that that causes it a little harder to wear because it pulls on the glove keeps it tight so all I do is I just put the rivet in, put them on one at a time. You don't have to use the spacer on these because they're not supposed to move that much. And, and see right here the, the bend. The bend on the finger, how it meets the back plate that helps you adjust it a whole lot more okay now that we have all the hardware put together you know you, uh, you've got it all there but where you've sorted and got it hot and hammered I like to polish mine up just a little bit so I just take some 120 grit or you can take 200 or if you need to knock some edges off like this little piece right here you can take 80 grit but uh, this little piece right here is going to be aggravating so I'm going to try and file it down. where it won't rub but uh, yeah you can just take your time polish it up or you can leave it all dark the way it is and on the knives if you do that you can take and where you've put a slight edge on it you can run a file over it that way you'll have a shine and that makes it look even sharper than what it would be so this part's all up to the individual so there that's what I do is I polish it up and make it presentable one thing I forgot to do before I put it together is you know the ones in the movies you know have sorter on the back of the hand you know it makes it look uh, all handmade and like it was just thrown together. I like to put it on there with the silver sorter for another reason. The silver sorter is strong, more durable, it won't bend, and if you put a little bit on the back plate, it'll make it a little bit stronger. So I try to just randomly rub it across the back for designs, looks, and for stability.
Okay, now that it's all put together except for the glove, put it on the glove, fix it to where everything feels nice, lines up. Take some kind of marker and mark where holes need to be in the back of the glove. That's where you're going to put the rivet holes. And on the front, you're supposed, you know, the gloves actually have cutouts in the tips and in the middle. But to hold the glove on a lot easier with your fingers, I just cut a section out in the center. So that uh, the glove holds together better. And then the palm, you can do as much or as little as you want, but average of something a little more than that, but about like that. Just the palm down and try not to cut the stitches so that your glove don't fall apart. Um, I'm going to cut that out and I'll be back. Now that I've got the holes cut, I like to distress it quite a bit. So what I do is I'll take a sander, belt sander, and just rub over the cuts to make them look worn. Stressing it as much as you want, and uh, once you get it, we'll put uh, the knives on. Once I get it scuffed up, one thing I like to use is shoe polish. You know, Kruger, he worked in a boiler room, you know, dirty, sooty. So, shoe polish can look like coal dust on clothing and you know the gloves so yeah, I just whatever I get on them I just rub it you can uh, melt it a little bit and just use a cloth to dab a little bit You know, just don't be afraid to put stuff on it. As you know, in the movie, you know, he made the gloves from scrap. Just pouring stuff out and picking what worked. That's what we're doing here. That's what we're trying to make it look like. We've had this glove, used this glove, worked with this glove for years. We don't want it to look new. So, I also have some brown to help make it look aged. Darker leather. So, yeah. If you want to, put as much as on it as you want, or as little. Alright. Okay, it's time to put everything on. So, let's just slide the fingers in. Ding, ding. Guess that meant we was racing. Look how old and wore out that looks. Looks like it's been used for years. Now, 
here's the inside plate that I was telling you about earlier. Let's get us a rivet. Another frog. Let's go back here, find the first hole, and in the glove, and then on the inside of the glove, let's put the plate. Second one. Let's do the bottom one this time. Twist the plate up out of the way until we can find the hole in the glove. And line the rivet up in the hole. There it is. Then push the plate back over to where that hole is. You may have to bend it a little bit because you know the back plate is bent some. Get that squeezed in there good so it won't come out. There's the hole. been it a little extra so I'm gonna straighten everything up and I'll be right back so here's the final glove on the palm you can take like shoe leather string and punch a few holes and lace it back and forth if the glove's too loose and tighten it up and bring it down here and do a couple and tighten it up if you want but you know it just depends on how you want it to look how you want it to feel and 